Hello, everyone. My name is Sheikha Danielle, and I'm the Director of Education Programs at NORD, and I'll be your host for today's webinar on ways to get involved and raise awareness on Rare Disease Day. This webinar is a part of a free series of educational webinars for patients and caregivers. We're so glad that you were able to join us today, and we hope you join us for future webinars in the series. Now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague and our first speaker, Laura Mullen. She is NORD's Associate Director of Communications and PR. Laura, take it away. Thank you, Sheikha. So I'm Laura Mullen, and I'm going to talk to you today about our new awareness campaign for Rare Disease Day called Show Your Stripes and how you can get involved. I work with Christy Jensen, our marketing manager, who will follow up um, with talking to you about social media and fundraising. Now get ready to show your stripes. First off, what is Rare Disease Day? As most of you know, Rare Disease Day is celebrated every year on the last day of February, the most rare day on the calendar. The Global Rare Disease Day campaign is organized by Eurordis in Europe each year. NORD is the official sponsor of Rare Disease Day in the U.S. This year, NORD has launched a new awareness campaign centering on three simple words, show your stripes. Why stripes? As you also may know, the zebra is the symbol of rare diseases in the U.S. and is noted for its unique black and white stripes. Just as every zebra is unique, so are the members of our community. For the Show Your Stripes campaign, we've come up with a bold new look, playing off the zebra stripes, which you will see runs throughout the whole campaign. In keeping with the new Show Your Stripes campaign, we've given the rarediseaseday.us site an overhaul. It's still the home for all things Rare Disease Day and now provides information and materials on the Show Your Stripes campaign. When you have a few minutes, please check it out. The site is now organized by sections, including About the Day, Events, Get Inspired, Get Involved, and a link to the store, which is the only official place to buy official Rare Disease Day merchandise. Now, how can you get involved with Show Your Stripes? There are a variety of ways, ranging from the basic to the more involved. Show Your Stripes is a campaign that invites everyone, the rare disease community, companies, media, the general public, to all get involved. You can also come up with your own creative ideas on how to get involved with Show Your Stripes. Here are some ideas on how you might want to get on board. The first is the easiest. Wear stripes and spread the word for others to wear stripes on Rare Disease Day. Take a picture and post it on social media using the hashtags Show Your Stripes and Rare Disease Day. Stripe your organization's website for the day. A little more of an elaborate effort is by daring your company or organization to collaborate on a major striping concept for Rare Disease Day. For example, you might wrap a train car in stripes, or light up the exterior of a building with stripes, or arrange to take a photograph of a large number of you and your colleagues all assembled in stripes and then post on social media. You can also change your profile picture on social media using our Facebook profile picture frame, which is available on the site. We'd love you to post messages on social media to spread the word about Rare Disease Day and stripes and wearing stripes on Rare Disease Day. Um, again, please be sure to use the hashtags Rare Disease Day and show your stripes. You might think about pitching your local media outlets about your Rare Disease Day event or about your own personal story. We have templates that make this pretty easy on rarediseaseday.us. The site also allows uh, the sharing of your personal story, your connection to rare diseases. And finally, the Rare Disease Day US site enables everyone to download materials, including a social media toolkit, stickers that you can print out on Avery labels, the Facebook profile frame that I mentioned, 
and more. There's a lot there, and we'd love to see your creative ideas as well. So please check it out and have fun showing your stripes. Now I'll turn it off over to Christy Jensen, Nord's Marketing Manager. Thanks, Laura. Hi, everyone. I'm Christy, Nord's Marketing Manager. I've been working with Nord for almost five years now, and this will be my fourth year of working on Rare Disease Day with the community. Rare Disease Day is inherently an online social awareness campaign, and each year the global hashtag reaches thousands of people across the world. As a part of our new and exciting Show Your Stripes campaign, we are trying hard to not just raise awareness during Rare Disease Day, but to maximize it. With your help and by utilizing the resources that I'm going to share today, we can do that. So for starters, we have created a social media toolkit available for download on our raredisease.us website. If you visit our Get Involved section, you will find a link to it as a PDF on our site. The toolkit includes not only sample social media posts that you can customize and make your own, but it includes best practices and tips for social. So for those of you who are not social media savvy, this is the place for you to go and get comfortable. You can also find downloadable graphics to share on your profiles, including the images that I've shared on this slide. In addition to posting about Rare Disease Day in general, don't forget to share your experiences of Rare Disease Day events on social media after the event is over with the hashtags Rare Disease Day and Show Your Stripes. We also encourage you to consistently engage in posts about Rare Disease Day. Whenever you see a post about Rare Disease Day on social media, please like it, comment on it, share it. Doing these things help other people see the post and increases awareness of the day and of rare diseases. In our social media toolkit, we include some ideas for you to take your social efforts a step further. One way to do this is to commit your news feed to rare diseases during the month of February. We love this idea that was shared with us from an advocate before the new year. Take the ideas from our toolkit, share your story, share information about your disease, share the graphics that we've provided in the toolkit. Each day of February, share a post about rare disease or rare disease day. It's a great way to drive the message home and maximize awareness. Secondly, consider going live on Facebook to share your personal rare disease story. When you go live, your friends and family will be notified about it, drawing more attention to your important story. Although it may seem daunting, Facebook Live can be a more fun and engaging way to share your story online. Give it a try. You might like it and you might teach someone new about rare diseases. Again, in our effort to maximize social awareness for Rare Disease Day, we have launched a new Show Your Stripes challenge on our Facebook page. If you haven't done so already, all you need to do is share this post on your own Facebook wall with the call to action. Challenge accepted. Now I challenge you to do the same and share this video on your Facebook wall and ask your friends to do the same. And again, with the hashtags that you've heard a bunch of times throughout this presentation, hashtag Show Your Stripes and hashtag Rare Disease Day. The video in our post here is a newly developed video with 10 things that people may not know about rare diseases. We are presenting this challenge in an effort to make the video go viral and maximize social awareness. We've already reached over 60,000 people. Please help us take it even further by sharing it. Three randomly selected people who share the video and post the call to action will receive this cute striped out package, which will include Nord swag and swag from our friends at the Mighty that you can use to prepare for Rare Disease Day. Lastly, consider hosting a Facebook fundraiser. Not only will you be raising awareness for rare disease, but you will be raising money for a cause that you care about. Facebook fundraisers are a new and popular peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform all on Facebook, which makes it really easy to draw attention to your fundraiser, and donors don't ever need to leave Facebook to make a donation. Setting up your Facebook fundraiser is very easy. It should only take a couple of minutes, but it's actually raising money through it that can be the challenge. However, if you're pleasantly persistent and follow these guidelines, you can host a successful fundraiser. So here are the five tips. Number one is to spread the word. Invite your friends to join your fundraiser and then share information about it on your Facebook page regularly. Some examples of how to do this would be to post once a week on your Facebook page with an update on how your fundraiser is doing. You can share a link to it in a group email to your friends and family. 
share a link to it on your other social platforms like Snapchat, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Second, make your fundraiser personal. Think about and share your personal story and your motivation to fundraise for your cause. This will pull at the heartstrings and make your friends feel more inclined to give. Number three, up the ante. After you've shared your fundraiser and made it personal, you should start to notice that you've raised some money and you may hit your original goal before the fundraiser closes. And that's great, keep it going. You can actually increase your goal amount after your fundraiser ends. If people see that you've already reached your goal, they won't feel as inclined to make a donation. But if they see you're still working to raise money, they know that there is still room to help. Keep increasing your goal and you may raise double the amount that you set out to. Number four, match the goal. You can work with your friends and family by matching the donations that they've given. You could do this by matching the total amount at the end of the fundraiser, match half of the goal, or match every donation of $10 or less. Lastly, number five, make sure to say thank you to those who have given. In fundraising, it is always important to say thank you to those who have opened up their wallets. Make sure to do this on Facebook too by tagging them in a post, responding to their donation via the comment field, or send them a direct message. And so now I thank all of you for your time and listening to this presentation, and I look forward to seeing all of you on social media. Remember that together we can really spread the word about Rare Disease Day and make a huge impact for our community. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kristen for Ask C events. And good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk today a little bit about our advocacy events that are taking place around the country um, on or around Rare Disease Day through our Rare Action Network program. So the Rare Action Network serves to connect and empower a unified network of individuals and organizations with tools, training, and resources to become effective advocates for rare diseases through national and state-based initiatives across the United States. We stand for equitable access to timely diagnosis, treatment, and care for every person impacted by a rare disease. If you're not already a member of our Rare Action Network, I encourage you to visit rareaction.org and sign up today to become a member and see how you can get involved with your state's Rare Action Network. Today I'm going to go over the different types of advocacy events our state volunteer state ambassadors across various states are hosting this year for Rare Disease Day. Now these events don't always take place on February 28th. A lot of these are held at the state capitals, so we revolve our schedules for these events around legislative calendars in addition to um, when states are actually in session. So you'll see events starting as soon as uh, next week, actually. Monday and Tuesday is our first event in North Carolina uh, for Rare Disease Day, and we have events going all the way through to April 8th is our official last Rare Disease Day event for the year, uh, and that is taking place in Louisiana because they don't actually start session until the end of March, early April. Um, so the different types of events that you'll see um, our advocates hosting start with a legislative reception. So these are typically a full agenda program event where there are speakers that consist of patients, caregivers, medical professionals, industry representatives, all stakeholders of the rare disease community come together at the State House um, and share their personal connections to rare and how you know, um, living or working with rare disease patients and their families in that state are impacted by decisions that state legislators make on a daily basis uh, that could directly impact these, these communities, these different stakeholders. Um, they share their personal stories, they share the work that they're doing, um, and the audience consists of the general public. These are all open to the public. They're free to attend all of these events. Um, and then legislators, state legislators and state officials and their staff are invited to attend and learn about rare disease advocacy efforts in the state, any specific legislation that may be discussed um, or may be on the table that could impact the rare community um, would be addressed at these events as well. The next type of event are tabling events. So our advocates can host tables usually in high traffic areas at the state capitals, um, distributing information on rare diseases and rare disease day and just generating additional awareness um, and kind of doing a quick elevator pitch to passerbys, which consists of legislators and their staff members. 
on rare diseases in hopes that there would be follow-up conversations and, and more in-person meetings um, later on to continue the conversation about rare diseases throughout the year. And then another style event that we do are legislative visits. Uh, so our ambassadors and volunteers coordinate visits with elected officials on, uh, at, the, at the State House and meeting with them with small groups of advocates to go and share their stories and talk about any specific legislation that um, may be of uh, impact to the rare disease community and uh, you know, sharing our views on such legislation. Some of these events can also be mixed. So you can actually see in, our, in some states uh, tabling and legislative visits happening for the day or you know, a legislative reception that's followed by legislative visits to visit those that were not able to attend the actual reception. Um, tablings and also having the legislative visits are important. Um, even if it's a simple tabling happen happening on Rare Disease Day at the Capitol, we encourage families to attend um, and join our advocates that are manning the, the table uh, and sharing their stories to passerbys. It's important that the patient voice is represented and, and we would encourage the general public to attend any and all of these events. And lastly, the different style event that's taking place as well are community awareness events. In some states, it's not feasible to host an event at the state capitol. Um, so we, have, we seek out other areas and, and, and uh, venues to host such events where the rare disease community can still once, once come together and host similar events as a reception, a tabling, um, and encourage elected officials to attend as well as the general public, just bringing general rare disease awareness, working with other patient organizations to attend and have them set up a table as well um, on the work that their organization um, focuses on in, in the rare disease and encourage general public awareness about rare diseases and rare disease day to hopefully keep the conversations going and eventually advocate for change in that state. So you're probably now all wondering how you can get involved with what's happening in your state this year for rare disease day. So there's a couple of ways. Uh, this is our rareaction.org website. Um, you can simply visit rareaction.org and go to, to resources on visit our state profiles page with our, uh, and you can click on your state to see what's being planned in your state. And to the right, I have a, a snapshot of the actual state profiles. This is Illinois, for example, and they're hosting an event um, on February 27th. So the information and the registration form are all located on, on these state profile pages. You can also access your state's profile by visiting rare and then your state's initials.org. So rareil.org would be Illinois. The only state that is spelled out is Georgia, so that would be rarejorgia spelled out.org. Otherwise, the 49 other states are just the, the state initial. And then I also wanted to take this opportunity to mention those of you that are in the DC area for Rare Disease Day, NORD is participating um, with an exhibit We'll be showing videos during lunch uh, by patients, um, and also we'll be presenting a poster at the National Institute of Health's Rare Disease Day event um, on February 28th in DC, Maryland, sorry. <laughs> uh, the register for the event, um, you can visit ncats.nih.gov slash rdd, and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll stop by and, and visit our poster session and our exhibit. We'd love to see you all in, in attendance there, and that is a free event to attend uh, for those of you interested. For general information, um, you can contact action at rarediseases.org, and we'd be happy to help assist you with any questions about any of the advocacy events that you've learned about today. Um, and then, of course, please join the Rare Action Network if you're not already a member by visiting rareaction.org and sign up uh, on the Join button. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to hand it over to Caroline. Thanks, Kristen. Rare Disease Day is a great opportunity for students to raise awareness about rare diseases. There are ways students of all ages can bring Rare Disease Day to their campus. Today, I will highlight a few examples of ways either you or your student can participate in Rare Disease Day, and then I'll share some examples of what is being done by our student clubs and chapters. 
So as you may know, children make up a large majority of the 30 million people affected by rare diseases in the U.S. Many of these children face bullying and lack of peer acceptance due to their disease. Rare Disease Day is a great opportunity to teach students about bullying, acceptance, and breaking down social barriers. It is a great time for a lesson in empathy and kindness and inclusion of those with differing abilities. We have some tips and examples of about how you can include this in a lesson on the Rare Disease Day website. You can also have your students complete the coloring sheets that are available on Rare Disease Day US. By posting the completed coloring sheets in the hallways for others to see, students can raise awareness about Rare Disease Day to the others in the school. We also have fun activities including word searches, crossword puzzles, and fact sheets available on the site. These are simple and fun ways to bring Rare Disease Day to the classroom. This year, we have especially great opportunities for high school students to participate in Rare Disease Day. Since social media is such a large part of many young folks' lives, students can get involved by encouraging their friends and other students to participate in the Show Your Stripes initiative that Laura and Christy spoke about earlier. By participating in Show Your Stripes on social media, It'll help spread the message beyond just the school community to those they know from other areas of life. We also find that high school students respond well to the firsthand experience of others. Invite a patient or caregiver to come speak to the class about their experience. And finally, we have a curriculum available with activities especially designed for Rare Disease Day. Some of these include having students present on a rare disease or topic related to rare diseases such as the Orphan Drug Act. By presenting this information to the class, it is a great opportunity to have students work on their public speaking skills while also educating others about these important topics. So there are many ways that college and university students can get involved. Um, a great way is to host an awareness event. And these events can be as simple as a tabling event in a high traffic area on campus, such as the Student Union, or a Facebook fundraiser to something like a symposium with multiple speakers, a panel, or a poster session. There are really no limits to what's possible on uh, college campuses. Some tips for putting on a successful event include collaborating with other student groups, getting a faculty member involved, and promoting your event on social media. Additional guidelines and tips for hosting campus events are available on rarediseaseday.us. And no matter what age you are or what type of event you participate in, be sure to show your stripes on Rare Disease Day and encourage others to do so as well. You may not be aware that NORD has a student club and chapter program. Uh, this program is designed for students to raise awareness about rare diseases on campus all year long. The clubs and chapters are made up of passionate students, ranging from high schoolers to graduate students, studying things like medicine, pharmacy, and genetic counseling. Rare Disease Day is the biggest day of the year for these student groups, and they work really hard to put on some fantastic events each year. So I wanted to share with you some examples of events our students are participating in this year. Our Iowa State Club is having a physician speak about diagnosing rare diseases. His talk will be followed by a poster session with students from the university who have a rare disease or a personal connection to a rare disease presenting on their experience. Notre Dame is partnering with the Center for Rare and Neglected Diseases on their 10th annual conference on advancing rare disease research, therapy, and patient advocacy. And finally, McGill University is hosting a series of speakers and a discussion on the diagnostic odyssey. So as you can see, there are many topics and styles of events to choose from, depending on what interests you and what works best for your student community. If you're interested in learning more about how you can get involved or would like to learn more about our student club and chapter program, contact education at rarediseases.org. And now I'll turn it back to Sheikha for the Q&A. Laura, Christy, Kristen, Caroline, thank you so much for your presentations. Um, we have collected a number of questions during the webinar, so I will throw these questions out to you guys. Um, let's see. So I think this question is particularly for Laura and Christy. 
Um, someone said that they tried to print out the labels that are on the website, um, but they've been having challenges. Um, do you have any recommendations? I think it, it may be related to, this, to the um, label size. Yeah, we actually just updated those on our website during this webinar. So I would go back and give it another try. Just refresh your browser before you um, try printing again. We, we just got it updated. So it should work. This wow. Time. Talk yeah. about <laughs> multitasking. Amazing. <laughs> okay, so we have another question here about whether people can use the term show your stripes on their Facebook fundraiser. Um, that would be great. Uh, we would suggest naming your fundraiser as something like show your stripes by making a donation to the organization that you're raising money for. Um, that would give it a little bit more of a call to action. But yes, yeah, excellent way to show your stripes. That's right. Great. Um, someone wanted to know where they can find the video you mentioned, the one that we want to make social. Or viral. Yes, uh, you, can, you can find the video that we mentioned earlier, the challenge video, on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash national organization for rare disorders. And it's the first post that's pinned on the top of our page. And if you're not on Facebook but you still um, want to see the video, it's on our YouTube channel, and you can, again, search for National Organization for Rare Disorders on YouTube. Great. Um, let's see. Someone wanted to know if we are still accepting patient videos and stories for the NIH Rare Disease Day event and for the NORD website. So we are definitely still accepting stories um, on the NORD site. Um, on the rarediseaseday.us pages, there is um, a section called Share Your Story in which you can fill out a form and um, submit your story that way. And we're collecting stories and going through them and sharing the ones that we find most impactful. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a great way to show your stripes. Great. Uh, this, I have a couple questions for Kristen. Um, Kristen, someone wanted to know um, if they can get a list of the social media platforms for RAN. Is that something that you maintain? Um, sure. So, so uh, for RAN on Facebook, we actually just utilize our Nord um, Facebook account. Uh, some of the states do have their individual um, Rare Action Network and then their state Facebook pages, but that's up to the volunteers that are uh, our ambassadors that are in those states. Um, we are active on Twitter, and our our Twitter handle is at Rare Action. So please do follow us on uh, Twitter, uh, and you can get up to date on that. Uh, and then in terms for the specific states, we just utilize the one Twitter handle for all of our state uh, Rare Action Networks. Great. Um, and then someone wanted to know if um, people are meeting their lawmakers in D.C. on Rare Disease Day. Uh, Kristen, that question is for you. Sure. So, um, you know, being uh, overseeing the Rare Action Network and working with advocates um, on a national and state level, we always encourage people to meet with their elected officials. NORD is not coordinating meetings specifically in D.C. on Rare Disease Day. However, there are other organizations that are coordinating those efforts um, in D.C., so I would recommend reaching out to some of those organizations, uh, the other organizations, uh, in order to participate in that. But if you're not in the D.C. area, we do encourage you to visit your state's legislators at your state capitals. Um, there's a lot of tools and resources in our uh, information area on the rareaction.org website on how to prepare to meet with your legislators, and there's some downloadable materials as well that you can bring along with you. So we highly encourage it. And of course, let us know if you are meeting with your legislators. We'd be happy to provide you with additional talking points. Just email action at rarediseases.org. 
Great. Caroline, this question is for you. Uh, do you know if University of Texas Austin is a chapter? So we do not have a chapter at University of Texas Austin, but we'd be really excited to if someone listening wanted to start one. Um, so if you know of someone interested, definitely reach out to education at rarediseases.org and we can be in touch about how to get that started. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, someone who works at a company um, is interested in having some um, materials for a rare disease day. Um, and they wanted to know um, who to contact regarding that. Yeah, that would be Christy or myself, um, marketing at rarediseases.org, and we can help um, get those out to you. Great. Um, and we don't have very many other questions. Someone wanted to know, do we have affiliations with genetic groups in South Carolina? And we don't specifically. Um, but uh, reach out to us and maybe someone on staff has um, some thoughts about that. Um, again, you can email us at education at rarediseases.org and we'll see what we can do. And we do have our South Carolina um, Rare Action Network ambassador who also um, is always looking for opportunities to connect with rare groups in South Carolina. So you can certainly visit um, rare S org and um, her contact information, Carrie Nelson, our South Carolina ambassador, is up there, so she would always be open for an opportunity to connect with other rare groups in the state. Great. So that is all the questions we've received. Does anyone else have any other questions? If not, then we can close the Q&A session. And I'd like to thank my colleagues so much for their presentations today. Um, if, you, if you had any additional questions um, that didn't get answered, or if you have a suggestion for a future webinar topic, you can email us at education at rarediseases.org and someone on staff will follow up with you. After the webinar, you'll, you'll receive a short survey. Uh, we encourage you to complete that because it does help us develop future webinars. Lastly, I want to thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, have a wonderful day.